the Shark Deck. Hello and welcome to Palace Intrigue. I am your host, Mark Francis. Good news. Harry and Meghan Markle's Archwell Foundation has raised $13 million. It has given away $3 million. Social media responses were what you'd expect. One user wrote, wait, they raised $13 million and only gave out $3 million. Another asked, OK, so where's the other $10 million? A third, they raised $13 million, gave away $3 million. My word, what is the rest going to be used for? Clothing and hotel allowance? The Independent looked a little deeper and sourced Royal Reporter R.S. Locke, who goes by the username at Royal underscore Suter on Twitter, tweeted a comparison between the Archwell Foundation's first year and the funds raised by the Royal Foundation, the foundations initially created by Prince Harry and his brother Prince William in 2011. The tweet says that the charity, which now supports William and his wife Kate Middleton, the Prince and Princess of Wales, saw £4.8 million in incoming resources in 2011 and gave £1.3 million in grants. Locke explained, Any resources not expended are carried over in reserve. It's not a competition. Some people didn't understand that startup foundations don't distribute all the incoming resources because they need to build a reserve. Meanwhile, Page Six reports Meghan and Harry have cut ties with two execs. Oscar-winning producer Ben Browning, who was the head of internal content at Archwell Productions, has a deal set to expire. A reason for why it was not renewed was not provided. Farah Taylor, the marketing campaign lead for Harry and Meghan Markle's podcast Archetypes and Harry's memoir Spare, is also set to transition out of her role later this year. Ashley Hansen, Markle and Harry's global press secretary, said of the exits in a statement, Ben and Farah have been integral to the creation and execution of many critically and commercially acclaimed projects during their tenure. They have expertly delivered content and campaigns that have exceeded expectations and made their mark within the cultural zeitgeist. Could the Archbishop of Canterbury be the one to settle the feud between Harry and the rest of the family? The Mirror reports the King is thought to have approached Justin Welby over a potential agreement that would pave the way for Harry and Meghan to attend the coronation. It is thought that the King feels that the couple's absence would be a greater distraction than their presence and is prepared to offer concessions in order to persuade them to attend. Meanwhile, William reportedly worries that Harry will use the event as a stunt and would like Harry's appearances to be tightly scripted. A source said, The issue of substance is whether they attend the coronation, and if they do, under what terms and conditions. The family is split. All the indications are that Harry is being advised to agree to nothing at this stage and play it long, right up to the last minute, which is making negotiations with him very difficult. Harry's camp made clear that the idea that he would just attend the coronation and behave himself but then be stripped of his titles was a total non-starter. Harry is also said to be annoyed he is being called a problem prince in the same category as Prince Andrew. Palace Indrig will be right back. Newsweek points out a TikTok video showing Prince William with a grown-out beard has gone viral on TikTok, reaching over 1 million views, after Prince Harry's claim that William demanded he shave his off before his wedding to Meghan Markle. The video shows William in 2008. William had grown out the facial hair during a Navy Special Boat Service training operation with the British Royal Navy in Barbados earlier that December, though he was restricted in how long he could keep the beard owing to the British military's differing rules on appearance. In January 2009, William was due to start a training course with the Royal Air Force to become a search and rescue pilot. Unlike the Navy, the RAF does not allow its servicemen to sport facial hair, so the prince shaved off his beard before reporting for duty. Harry wrote about beards in spare. A beard was thought by some to be a clear violation of protocol and long-standing norms, especially since I was getting married in my army uniform. Beards were forbidden in the British Army, but I was no longer in the army and I desperately wanted to hang on to something that had become an effective check on my anxiety. I explained all this to Granny and she said she understood, plus her own husband liked to rock a bit of a scruff now and then. Yes, she said, you may keep your beard. Harry continues, At one point he actually ordered me, as the heir speaking to the spare, to shave. Harry asks William, Are you serious? I'm telling you, shave it off. For the love of God, Willie, why does this matter so much to you? Because I wasn't allowed to keep my beard, William said. 
Ah, there it was. After he'd come back from an assignment with special forces, Willie was sporting a full beard and someone told him to be a good boy, run along and shave it. He hated the idea of me enjoying a perk he'd been denied. Yahoo reports a new episode of The Windsors, a comedy show that mocks the royal family, is being made for his coronation, with a full series to follow later in the year. It stars Harry Enfield as Charles and Hayden Gwynn as Camilla. Gwynn reacted to Harry's book, I thought my Camilla had nothing to do with the real Camilla. She added, they have commissioned another series which will be shooting later this year, but also we're going to be very soon doing a coronation special. The show, which never portrayed the Queen, previously ran for three series from 2016 to 2020. And there you have it. If you'd like to email us, our address is thepalacentric at gmail.com. Please follow us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, wherever you get your favourite shows. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McDermott. This is Palace Intrigue. Good times. All right, here's the pitch. Five stories. They're all good news. It's called Five Good News Stories. No negative news, just good news. Nice, easy way to start your day. Hopefully a smile. Hi, I'm Johnny Mack, host of Five Good News Stories. You get the premise? There's five stories, and they're all good news. It's the number five good news stories. Five good news stories. Follow the show wherever you get your podcasts.